Hello and welcome to The Flying Reporter. And it's a big day because India Victor is going on its first flight since the engine had a top end overhaul. This episode is the first in a new series of videos titled Inside the Hangar. Like scratch here. I know that you've been enjoying seeing the work that the engineers do here at Aero Anglia, and so we're now going to try and make it a regular feature. What better way to start than to put on India Victor's shiny new spinner and get her out on the apron, ready for her first flight since all this major engine surgery? You're just showing off now. Yeah, well... You'd never do this if I, I wasn't here. <laughs> you... <laughs> I would. You, you'd leave all your thumbprints oh, on it like right normal. That. Well, yeah, that's true. Check out my earlier episodes, if you haven't seen them already, where we first diagnose the problems on my engine, remove the cylinders and replace them with new ones. India Victor has had two short ground runs and now engineer Aidan and I are going to fly for an hour to begin the engine break-in process. We need to keep ground running to a minimum at this stage and so I go through a lot of the pre-flight decisions and captain's brief before even starting up the engine. So I was going to do my kind of eventualities brief before we even start the engine. I don't want to be running. So we're going to use runway 23. Yep. It's uh, downhill, the wind favours it. Um, normal takeoff. We'll check power on, on the, at the start of the threshold. We'll do a short field takeoff, soft field takeoff, two, two stages of flat. Uh, climb initially, you know, rotate at 60, climb at 70, then we'll clean up and get a shallow climb going. Yep, that's the way. Um, the book says to come back to cruise power, uh, sorry, to cruise climb setting after takeoff, which are, are you happy with that or do you want to stay at 41? Yeah, what's the cruise climb setting? Is it over 70? It's, uh, th yes, it's yeah. worth 75, so it'd be 33, yeah. 24, 50. Yeah. If the temps and pressures are all right, we'll keep it at 41 at for, a, yeah. for a minute or two. <laughs> Uh, we'll talk to Washington. I've just given them a call so they're aware. Um, there are no no tams to affect the weather's absolutely perfect. And I suspect if we've got a problem and we're up at, I was going to climb to about 4,000 or yeah, so. Absolutely. And if, you know, we'll circle overhead. If we've got a problem on the runway, we'll close the throttle and stop. If we've taken off and we can land back, we will. If not, we're going on the, the, the best runway for fields yeah. anyway. Yeah. We'll go past Hadley and then round. Yeah, thanks, um, just keep climbing. Yeah, and if we have an engine failure after takeoff and there's no runway remaining, we'll uh, close the throttle and push forward to uh, get a glide speed. We'll probably still be dirty at that point, so we're looking for about 80 knots or so, I would have thought. Um, the actual glide speed is 97, best glide. What are we looking for if we've got, we've just taken, let's say we've just taken off and we're sort of coming up to the red or whatever on any of these gauges, I guess we land straight back. Uh, we'll just pull the power and lower the nose. If it, I mean, if it gets right up to the red, yeah. We'll yeah, we're back. coming back, aren't we? Yeah, we're coming back. But if it's creeping up towards the three quarters, we'll just manage it. Lower yeah. the nose and ease the power off just yeah. a fraction. Hey, prop! Unfortunately, I made the boo-boo of uh, not setting the intercom recording, so you didn't get our uh, takeoff um, process, but you obviously saw it. We're now in the overhead circling above Elmset at 4,000 feet. And what we're trying to do here is uh, basically bed in those cylinders, those new... Go off, Indy Victor, watch it. Go off, Indy Victor. I did just uh, bear in mind you're on an engine air tester. I've got no radar contact with them, but I do have an Apache uh, inbound to watch them low level from Colchester. 
And we'll look out for the traffic, go for Jupiter. Just in case you suddenly need to to descend. Roger, and we'll let you know if we need to do that, go for Jupiter. Go for Jupiter, Roger, thanks. So what we're doing here is bedding in the cylinders. Um, and we do that by keeping the power up for a good two hours. Um, and so we're running at 75% power now. And we're 100 degrees rich of peak, so we're running at best power um, fuel flow. And everything is normal. Um, the cylinder head temperatures are slowly coming down, which is the sign that we're looking for. And what we're going to do is an hour here in the overhead at Elmset, so we can make it back if we have a problem. But everything is good at the moment. So, Aidan, explain, you know, why we have to do this high power cruise in the first two hours, uh, and, and actually beyond that, we need to stick, keep that up for probably about ten hours. Yeah, uh, probably. Um, the general idea is that we keep the, the pressure up in the cylinders, which forces the piston rings out against the cylinder walls. Just slightly breaks down the lubrication film over the high spots and w what we should end up from the honing pattern that we started with, which is basically a load of scratches. Some of the deep scratches remaining to retain oil, but the high spots shaved down into sort of plateaus which form a good bearing surface and a good sealing surface. So when those cylinders came to us, we had those scratches, but they were, they were, they were quite deep scratches. Yeah. And you've recorded a video, in fact, showing what we're looking for there. Yeah, I mean, initially they retain a lot of oil. Once the ring seats and forms its own sort of bearing surface on the cylinder, you should have just a few of the deeper scratches left, you know, a good percentage of the deeper scratches left. That retains a little oil, yeah, and, and also gives you a good seal. So, yeah, this video you've shown shows us kind of the it, what's going on inside the cylinder. How much oil it actually holds yeah. when you scratch yeah. the surface, yeah. Let's have a look at that now. Right, so one of the places the oil in your engine really earns its money is at the uh, piston ring to cylinder or interface. This is the inside of a cylinder. Exhaust valve, inlet valve, spark plug, spark plug. Cylinder bore, cooling fins on the outside. Piston, piston ring. Okay, now the way, the way, the special feature of this surface is something called honing. And uh, see this surface, it's got these rough crosshatch the scratches. Some of them are surprisingly deep, they'll catch, they'll catch the point of the feeler gauge there. Others are more shallow, the feeler gauge follows that one quite happily. Others are more shallow. And the piston rings, they used to have quite a lot of tension in them. They're made, they're made larger than the bore. So you can see there's quite a lot of tension in that ring to get it in the bore. And it presses hard against those cylinder walls. And the purpose of the honing, the cross hatching, is basically to retain some oil on that cylinder wall. Um, and we can do a little experiment to see how that works. And we can look into some cylinders and see what happens over the time because this is a brand new a brand spanking new cylinder and as luck would have it we've got some other engines in the hangar tonight with various hours on them of this exact type all right let's do a tiny experiment imagine this piece of tool steel is a piston ring imagine the block that i've got here is a cylinder wall and the cylinder wall is normally not quite as hard as the ring um, typically these days you find very hard chrome rings for the top and, and second ring and probably nitrided steel for cylinder walls that seems to be a successful combination uh, chrome is harder than nitrided steel and likewise here tool steel is harder than the mild steel block now if we put some oil on this yeah it helps slides much easier but straight away you can see that film of oil very quickly after a few strokes has been bulldozed to here and here. So honing is one of the ways we can avoid that to some degree. Right, the other side of the block has been honed crudely with some sandpaper. I've got a cross hatch pattern of scratches um, running at a 
about the right angle, not too close to the angle of the ring. And you can see with the same amount of oil, it's kind of retained in the scratches. And actually it's not being bulldozed to the ends. And I can bear down quite hard on this piece of tool steel. And it's not forcing the oil film off anywhere near as quickly if at all. So that's one of the things that honing does is retain oil on the cylinder wall. Now during the bedding in period this is where you might use a straight mineral oil or at least a dispersant oil without fancy anti-wear additives because what you need to do is with these piston rings basically knock off some of the high spots but leave a few scratches and that results in a cylinder wall which can retain a little oil but has a good sealing bearing surface and can really withstand some some grief. Well, let's have a look in some actual cylinders. All right, we are lucky because in the hangar tonight we've got two DSIO 360 engines. One has done 70 odd hours, the other one has done 450. Let's have a look inside. Right, this is inside the cylinder of the engine with 70 hours and you can see those honing marks, that cross hatch pattern of scratches, still quite defined. Um, this engine has settled down reasonably well and the oil consumption is good, so that's looking okay. Right, so this is the 450 hour cylinder. Although really you can see the deeper scratches remain, the to me, it's the high spots have been sheared off. Um, so there are some plateaus of additional bearing surface. And this is a, a properly bedded cylinder. The compressions on these are really good. The oil consumption has stabilized and is quite low. And this is also a very, very stable and lasting condition. Um, rings can go up and down over these bores for thousands and thousands of hours and they don't deteriorate much further between this stage and TBO when, when it all starts to you know, sometimes break down. Uh, I had a quick mental arithmetic. In 450 hours, if this engine only averaged 2000 RPM, the rings have gone up and down 54 million times. And every other one of those strokes, it's been accompanied by a, an explosion with soot, contamination, combustion products, and everything else. All needs to be cleaned away by the oil film. The oil film needs to remain intact so nothing comes too much into contact and galls or scuffs. The oil really earns its money in this part of the engine. It's a hot, unpleasant environment and you need good oil. So that's showing you there, isn't it, Aidan, the kind of condition that we're looking to get to at the end? Where yeah, the, the second cylinder, I think, had done 450, 500 hours. And if you get that at that stage, you should be good for many, many thousands of hours with luck. And if we don't do this process and we just run as normal, you know, put yeah. around, what, what, what's the You danger? can get a, a sort of a coating of engine deposits baked onto the cylinder wall. Um, Blazing. It fills in all the scratches, it prevents oil retention and the rings sort of skate over it and you get poor oil consumption, possibly poor compressions and general, you know, uh, poor settling of the engine and it, it, it's not a good condition to have. Oh, there's no way back from it really other than to pull the cylinders off and scratch through it all again. And how will we know that we've completed this bedding in process? I think usually good oil consumption is a, is a good indicator. I mean, eventually we'll do a compression test on it at some point, but good oil consumption. We can always have a look in the cylinders with the boroscope, make sure it's going okay. At, when you come into your first oil change, it's sort of maybe 10 hours. And we're running on straight oil, so that's... We're right using 80 viscosity. Using 80 8, viscosity 8. for the winter. Yeah. Yep. Um, and that's because we don't want any anti-wear additives, because what we're actually trying to achieve is the wear, yeah. aren't we? Yeah. You can, with the turbocharged engines, you can add dispersant oil. Um, in fact, like combing with their turbocharged engines, say so you mustn't use straight at all. Right. Straight to disperse. Continental will allow you 25 hours. Um, we'd probably go less than that. Right. 
Are we doing oil change at 10 hours? So if I come in at 10 and we have a look, yeah. and, uh, expect to see a bit of metal in the filter. Expect probably. to see a bit of metal <laughs> in the filter. We've got a filter from a new engine in the hangar actually to compare it to. So. Right. A new one, a newish one of these. Right. Uh, TSI 360. Yeah, they do make a little bit in the first. Uh, the other thing I've got to do when we come in for approach is, is to descend with power on. We don't want a low power descent. Yeah, I mean, as much as you can safely do, to say when we're doing it, we often raise the nose, put the gear down, and a lot of light airplanes, that'll, that'll slow you up enough without reducing the power much until you're set up for landing. But if you ease off the power gently, a few minutes, a few minutes at reduced power isn't going to hurt it. I mean, you, you've got no choice when you want to land. And according to the Continental Manual, in the second hour of this flight, which will be my flight back to Red Hill, we're alternating between 75% and 65% yep. power. Yeah. I don't know why they say that. I mean, it gives you a bit more scope if you need to climb, because some of these airplanes, normally aspirated airplanes, you some places you'll run out of uh, you'll run out of 75% with full throttle even so we don't have that problem we don't have that problem <laughs> with the turbo no. so the whole purpose of these inside the hangar episodes i know this this started inside the hangar and now we're outside the hangar yeah um, but we brought we brought a bit of the hangar with us here. It, it makes it more interesting i think when you've got some uh, flying footage. <laughs> um, the whole purpose of it is to kind of answer all of those burning questions you might have. You know, it's 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 kind of we have a wonderful resource here in Aiden, a very experienced engineer. Well, if we don't know something, we'll try and find out for you as well. So, so if you have any burning questions about aviation uh, uh, engineering, um, certainly on the kind of air aircraft we fly here. Um, then um, do ask because we'll make an episode about it and in, in forthcoming yeah. episodes we're going to be doing one about we were just talking oil we're going to be talking about the different types of oil there are and how they're used we're going to talk about magnetos and how they work and starting the difficulties sometimes people have starting and why that is uh, and what you can do to improve your chances of a good start um, so yeah, if you've got any thoughts about things you want us to cover in these episodes, then uh, do get in touch in the comments or by email. Are you thinking about a zero five landing? I am thinking about a zero five landing. Are you? Yeah, I don't think. I think, think that'd be that'll better work. for braking on the grass. Yeah. I think that will, you know, there's very little wind, isn't there? Five to seven knots. It's a slight crosswind, so at most we're going to have like probably like max five, five knots. Five tailwind, tailwind, yeah, yeah, which, which is, is fine for zero five. Yeah. Right, I'll take control. Yep. I'll control. What is your uh, goal, Pindy Victor? Go Pindy Our details complete now. Uh, we're going to uh, position for runway 05 and begin a gradual descent uh, to circuit altitude. Good, uh, Indy Victor, we're doing traffic information for you then uh, to the north-west of you, north-north-west of you actually, by three miles, tracking south-west at this time, indicating that that is 700 feet in the climb, it's believed to be an RV8, reportedly climbing to altitude 3,000 feet. Roger, we'll, uh, we'll let the aircraft uh, leave the area and then we'll uh, begin our descent. Go Indy Victor. Go Indy Victor, Roger. So I'll come round. So, as discussed, I'm descending on power to keep the engine pressures high as much as possible during this engine break-in process. A quick reminder that this video is brought to you in part thanks to the generosity of my Supporters Club members. They pay a small monthly fee which helps to keep the channel going, and in return I share with them bonus content and behind-the-scenes updates. Over on the Supporters Club channel now, I'm sharing my tips for operating your aeroplane in freezing temperatures and how best to de-ice the airframe. I discuss flying in windy weather and how you establish your own personal flying limits. And there's a video showing how to land a seaplane on a hard runway. For members signing up through my website, you can get one month for free now. Visit www.johnhunt.net and the link is on your screen.
Brakes undercarriage is down, three greens, mixture is rich. Landing light fuel, we're on the tank with the fullest. Uh, you're strapped indoors, long, yeah. gonna need uh, full flap. Uh, sorry, fire perch, uh, Godfight Tango. Godfight Tango, we're going to put change in on this. Mixture of fuel, prop, it's calm. Victor, right hand downwind, runway 05 at Elm set to land. Squawk on security on the ground, Golf Victor. Elm set has a pretty steep upslope on runway 05 and a clearer undershoot. It's the preferred runway here for arrivals if the tailwind isn't too bad because of houses on the approach the other end. Track flap out. Oh, on approach now. So a successful first flight and it's back to the hangar now to lift off the cowling and check for any leaks or other anomalies. Richard noticed that the oil breather pipe needed a slight adjustment, some of the baffles needed a tidy up and the oil wanted a top up as well, but other than that, she's good to go. Aero Anglia has done a fine job turning around this major piece of engineering work in just over a month. We were helped by the expert advice from Norvik Aero Engines, who had six new Continental cylinders sitting on the shelf in their stockroom. I'm hearing horror stories from other owners at the moment who are waiting six months or more for engine parts due to manufacturer delays. We were truly lucky. And so India Victor is back in business, and with the turn of the new year, I'm busier than ever making more content for the channel. Before I wrap up today, a reminder that I've struck a deal with Pooley's Flight Equipment, offering you 5% off qualifying purchases from their online store. If you need something, save yourself some money using my discount code TFR. I'll sign off then. Until next time, fly safely, my friends. Bye for now.